of how to get a mock-ups project started. Uh, you can log in and get a free account. Uh, the free account gives you uh, the ability to make two projects with uh, 400 objects in each project. Uh, that should be more than enough to allow you to wireframe your ideas. Um, you can make a new project. It starts with the default, but you can make a new one um, by clicking on the plus up here and, and sort of uh, picking a template for what you want to do. Um, you can have a flow chart, uh, and it sort of gives you a sample flow chart there. Uh, and I could make, say, a mobile app wireframe document. And you'll see over here that, uh, you know, we've got, uh, uh, we can sort of pick and choose between the elements, the documents that, uh, that we have available to us. Uh, when you want to get rid of those, again, um, you only have a limit of 400 items, so you can uh, click on it and you can uh, move uh, these individual documents to the trash if you want to get rid of them and sort of save some space, uh, play around a little bit. So um, what we'll do maybe is uh, I'll just uh, show you some other features here. Um, th the workspace you have is editable and you can actually click on the right or the bottom and you can extend or change the size of the work area. Uh, and that can be handy for uh, placing, uh, uh, placing uh, your elements in your document and giving you the space to work. Don't worry about trying to keep to any uh, regular paper shy space. A lot of the wireframe documents I work with or I put together, I actually make the document really long and wide and it gives me the, the space that I need to sort of fully sort of map out what I want to be doing. Um, the other thing I would recommend too um, is um, not necessarily trying to change some of the default shapes of the elements you pull out. Um, so for example here when I look at um, some of my stencils You'll see I've got all kinds of categories of stencils here, you know, common stencils, different shapes. I've got flowchart diagram elements, iOS components. So say, for example, I want to make a flowchart with an iPhone 10, so I drag over my iPhone 10. Um, and then I want to maybe bring a button or something on there, so maybe I'll drag out a button and drop that there, or I'll drag out a little, little menu masthead there. So, um, as it is with the default, they, 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 um, they often sort of fit either close to or within the scale of what you need. Um, so, I would be careful with, um, say, for example, bringing out a phone originally. Let's uh, go back and do that again. We'll go to devices. Uh, we'll bring out a phone and say, well, I kind of need to save space on the page. So, I'm going to make that phone really small so I can... Uh, perhaps, you know, pull out, you know, a couple of copy and paste and, you know, a couple of phones. The problem with that is uh, in changing those scales at that point, um, uh, it's, um, it sort of makes your devices, it makes all of your buttons and your labels and menus all really offside and uh, it's easier just to uh, it's easier just to maintain the default size I've found and um, rather than try to shrink the devices just make your workspace longer okay so if I wanted to you know put that here and then copy and paste to make another so there's my next screen and my next screen uh, you know I can just continue to drag out phones onto my expanded workspace um, and I don't have to shrink everything okay uh, and like I said, you can you can make uh, documents that are considerably sized, so you don't have to worry about shrinking the original size of the devices. Uh, that just makes things a little a little harder. Uh, what I'd maybe like to start with now, uh, another thing is um, is maybe going over sort of the flow charting. Uh, so you pull down your flow chart tab, and you can drag out any of these elements, the sort of standard flow chart icons. So I could have a process there and another process there and uh, you know drag those out uh, I can copy and paste them and make more okay so uh, these elements you can actually name so maybe that's my home screen and this is uh, you know s screen one and screen three screen two and you do have some controls up here, bolding, italic, and whatnot. Um, and this might be some sort of a decision, which way am I going. 
so these are flow chargeable. So the the point being that you can you can pull off from these corners and you can you can sort of manage the flow of your diagram. You'll see they'll snap. And if I want to pull off one on the top and snap it to you know the outside of this, okay. So you can you can create. Um, you can sort of create some pretty interesting diagrams and flows uh, without having to spend a lot of time, you know, drawing lines and charts, and uh, it makes it makes it pretty handy. Um, you can color them. Uh, you can move them around. Um, you can edit these lines. Like if I wanted this to sort of come out a little bit, sort of I can click on that line there, and I kind of want it to line up with that just because visually it'd be more appealing. So I can. So I can do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is the is the flow charting, um, and um, you can make a, a couple of documents. So you might want to make a flow chart document, and you might want to make a wireframe document. Uh, so when I go to my pages, um, I can see that I've got my, you know, my flow chart page and my blank play page. So um, any of these at any point in time, if you wanted to get rid of or copy and paste between, you can do that. Um, and um, again, keep in mind that uh, you know you get a total of uh, uh, a total of uh, 400 items. So uh, there's an item there, and there's a Samsung phone there, um, and uh, that should be more than enough to wireframe. I think the document that uh, you're going to be producing for this. So uh, enjoy, email me if you have any questions, and uh, I look forward to continuing to work with you guys and building out your uh, wireframes and your ideas.